What is going on guys? Thank you so much for tuning in back to the channel. Behind me here we got our 91 Nissan 240SX street build. Today's project is actually going to be super special because we're partnering up with Virgo Speed Industries. We're doing something a little bit different in the S chassis community. We're going to be converting our power steering to full electric. And I'm pretty sure not a lot of people actually know that it's possible. But here's how it's going to work. We're going to drop the rack, take all the lines out, take the reservoir out, and send our steering rack over to Washington where they're located. They're going to do some modifications, send everything back to us and then we can complete the install but for today we're just gonna drop everything right now so let's get started okay so now a couple reasons why we're actually gonna be doing this modification for one it's gonna remove all this junk in this section of the engine bay to kind of make the engine bay look a little bit cleaner more tidy now the second reason these cars are prone to leaking being so old so the power steering system is always under high pressure we're gonna be removing another fluid less leaks means a cleaner engine bay but before we handle this we're actually gonna get down on the ground and start removing the rack. I'll show you how to do it, it's pretty easy. Okay, so our first step here is to get the car up in the air, remove the wheels, so we'll have more clearance to get the tie rod ends off of the car. I could never be an F1 mechanic, I swear. So we're gonna start right here at the outer tie rod end. All these parts on this car are bone stock. Everything is OEM. Everything needs to be changed, but it's a good excuse to upgrade it at least. It's from Japan! We're gonna start by taking this outer ball joint out, removing the cotter pin here, and then get the 19 millimeter castle nut. Hit it with the mallet and break this loose. So we knocked it out on this one side. We're gonna repeat the same step to the other. So now we're gonna take off the rest of the arm. We're gonna remove this tie wire, chop that off. So with the boot pulled back, we actually have a lock plate right here. We're just gonna wedge a screwdriver, pry it off. Make sure not to mar this up because this is a portion of the rack itself. Okay, so all these tabs are up. Now we can break this loose. There we go. On to the next one. We're actually just gonna move over here. We're gonna take these two lines out and then remove the shaft bolt to the rack itself. And then we have two more bolts on each end here for the actual rack itself and it comes right off. 17 on the top line. You know what? We're actually, we're just gonna loosen everything for right now. That way we don't have leaking fluid everywhere. 12 mil on the shaft. 14 mil on the lower line. All right, we're gonna cap it up. Come on, you bitch. So we got all three of those loose. Now we're gonna remove it from the brackets themselves. All right, rack's coming out. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was gonna be broken. Well, these plates will come out though. Look how dirty those are. Oh, and you know what? While we're at it, we should buy them right now. Solid rack bushings. It's from Japan! I think this just turned into one of the messiest jobs that we've ever had to do on the channel. In-ground lift would be nice. Do we have one? No. Are we making it work? Yeah. We'll just let it drain for now and uh, then come back to it. All right, so everything stopped leaking now. I'm gonna actually hit that yoke and push this off of the rack itself. Just like that. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for, we're gonna get this rack out now. Just gotta finagle it. Hell yeah, dude! Oh, you mother, yeah! Boop. Now we're gonna take a couple 10 mils and then bolt everything on top. Won't be needing that no more. Now we're gonna remove the reservoir. I'm gonna take this line off right here now. And then we'll take this one off as well. All right, reservoir is gone. And just for clearance purposes, the main hose from the reservoir, I'm gonna remove that from the pump right there. Yeah! Well, that was bound to happen, I guess. Now get yourself a 24 mil and remove the banjo bolt on the pump. This should release us completely from the hard lines that led to the rack. There we go. Just gonna put this bolt right back in now. So now we're gonna try to finagle these two hard lines out. I think there's a bolt back here somewhere and uh, this should all just come right out. Hard line brackets come out. It's all loose now. We're just gonna snap this line right here. I'm gonna do it both ways because I'm not gonna struggle with the bolt down there. We'll never be using these lines again anyway. Whew. Oh, 
All right. That's one of them. Look how absolutely nasty this is. It's a rough day today. All right, we got our last lines right here. We're gonna disassemble all this and yank it out. There we go, everything drops on down. Not too sure what this is, but it is a sensor with a harness attached to it. Up above, we're gonna disconnect that harness. Good. Done. Next step is remove the pump and prepare it to be depowered. We're gonna start by removing the two tensioner bolts to gain some movement to remove the belt, as well as the bolt on the upper side of the pump and it should wiggle free. Okay. There we go. So after wrestling with the steering pump for a minute, we're gonna crack this open now and devein the inside. First step here is just to take off the bracket, two 12 mils right here and here. And now we can take off these four 12 millimeters. There we are. All right, so these little tiny metal fins here, we're gonna take those out with a magnet, just like that. This is so cool. Now we can take out the rotor vane and the outer housing as well. Now we're just gonna clean this back side off here, make sure it's all clean and free of debris. Looks pretty good, nice and clean. And now we're gonna take this tube off with the 24 mil. All right. We'll remove these two 12s and replace this tube with the block off plate. Got some RTV here for the block off plate. Now we'll just attach it right to the pump itself and we'll reinsert the hardware. That looks pretty solid. And just for a little extra precaution, we're going to put a little bit of RTV on the top. I hate using RTV, but the main reason why we're doing this is so that we can avoid any future leaks. Just gonna throw the OEM metal gasket right back on. We'll drop that right back in place. We'll drop our original hardware back in now. So we're gonna clean this thing off, but before we throw it back on the car, you're gonna make sure you fill this hole right here up with ATF fluid right up until the threads start. You're gonna want your fill to be stopping right there. And then you'll throw your bolt into place. And like that, you successfully depowered your pump. All right, so we got this all nice and cleaned up. It's sealed off with the RTV. We got our block off plate and the block off plug. Once you guys do this, be sure to put about, it's roughly three shot glasses full of the ATF. It's not a lot, it's just until those threads start at the bottom of that plug there. So we can go throw this back in the car. All right, we got everything connected now, belts on tight, no lines or anything, the pump's all sealed up and it looks great in the car. So we're done with the engine bay, so we're gonna move on now. First thing we're gonna do is put our fingers right behind the actual base portion. So we'll just give it a couple tugs. There's gonna be a clip here, 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 and here, and that's where we're releasing it. There's one more at the center bottom. We're just gonna pull out and up. Be careful though, there are some, some wires back here, so when it breaks loose, don't just rip it out. I'm gonna disassemble this harness real quick, just in case this thing comes out. I don't wanna break any wires, so we'll just do that right now. This is trash. Now we'll take a 19 millimeter on this bolt here and just launch this off. We will keep it on a couple threads though, so we can pound this wheel off. Just like that. And there's our wheel. So now we can take off our surround plastic piece here. There's gonna be one, two, three, and four of the Phillips screws. There's two more hidden in the back that we'll get to later. Ignition ring came out. So we're just gonna disassemble this lower section. There's gonna be seven 10 mils, three on the right and four on the left, one of which is hidden behind the kick panel. Don't try to pull this out until you remove the hidden 10 mil in the back. Next, we're gonna remove the plastic kick panel I was talking about. Remove these three screws and the three 10 mils holding down the dead pedal. That's out of the way. There we go. And there's our last 10 mil. Now that we got that last hidden one out, we should be able to just drop this down and disconnect the hood pole by removing four screws, two on top and two on the bottom. There will also be one harness connector you will have to remove. Now we're on to the stocks. This clamp piece here should release everything once we remove the clip from underneath it. 
So now we just spin this clamp a little bit and we'll see a crack right there. We're just gonna shove our screwdriver on in. Yeah. Oh, now we can just take off all these harnesses real quick. There we go. And underneath the column, we got three bolts on the firewall section. Just gonna remove those with our super long extensions. Now, after those bolts are removed, there's these tabs that are all around this piece. We're just gonna take a needle nose plier and bend them up just like that. Metal tabs are pointed straight up, so now we're just gonna drop the rack on top. Two 12 mils are gonna come right out. And we got two more on the top side here. Just gonna break these loose. Make sure nothing's getting caught up real fast. Make sure all these connectors on the harness are disconnected from the column before you drop it. For you guys, it won't be any different, but it is about two weeks later. We got all the parts in from Virgo. We're gonna unbox everything and show you what it came with. It's a freaking huge box. There's a lot of, they packed it really well too. Here we go. This is all really nice stuff. We're gonna show you guys exactly what came in it. Quality looks amazing already. We got our upper column here. Uh, everything, all the welds look beautiful. It gives you the OEM tilt function for the wheel still. It's got a giant motor attached to it. There's so many small details in all of this work, like just the logo and the engravings on it. It's all really thought out. So this is our original rack that we sent into them. They powder coated it. Oh my gosh. This is like real race car stuff. Look at the quality. Powder coated everything. Their logo is like color shifting. I don't know if you can see it, but in the sun it's changing colors like a rainbow. God, everything looks perfect on this. That is our original rack. Look at, they even got the branding there on the top side too. Everything is brand new on this. Oh hell yeah, my favorite part. Got a little bit of sticker action going on. So this, this is the part that scares me. This is where Alina's gonna come into play into this build. Okay, it's not that hard. Beautiful wiring. That's like an OEM loom. Connectors are perfect. Everything looks beautiful. Nice and thick gauge wires. We also got the signal wire and then this OEM looking harness here. I'm sure this goes to the motor to the ECU or something like that. I believe this is our plate for the firewall. Nice and branded as well. Very legit. Very legit. So they even give you a little inline fuse box holder. It's even 3D printed it looks like. That's pretty cool. With the branding, EPS, 60 amp. That's super cool. Bunch of other wiring goodies in this bag here. Got our nice sturdy ECU here. Everything's painted and just looks really high quality. All right, so we got both columns out now. We're gonna be swapping the lock cylinder from the old one onto the new one here. And in order to do this, we have two security bolts that we're gonna have to drill out. Some people say you can use a chisel, but we're gonna drill it out. We have our center punch here. Make sure that it doesn't walk when we drill this out. So it turns out you do not have to drill, so don't listen to Sal. Alina used a punch here hit it on top of the mallet until it eventually broke loose. It gave you a little tiny slit. She was right, but also you can drill them out. Her, hers was a lot faster though. Either one works. So we're just gonna transfer our lock cylinder now over to the new unit. As you can see from the bottom side, it goes in that slot, so really easy to transfer it over. So that'll just slide right on there. Maybe we could throw I'm just gonna reuse these bolts for now. They don't gotta be tight, they just gotta be pretty snug, that's all. So now that we got our cylinder on, we're going to put the lower end shaft on. This is our lower shaft that they gave us. Really nice quality, it's got the branding here and the nice new, I think that's called a bulkhead seal. So we're gonna attach that to the bottom side of our column. And we'll go ahead and throw our 12 millimeter bolt in. So now we'll throw this back in the car and reverse our steps. Now for reinstallation, we got our three nylon washers and our plate. We're just gonna throw that onto the actual firewall now. We're just gonna finagle this in now. We're all right. Now we can go ahead and tighten up the bulkhead seal with the three nuts. Little trick, it really helps if you have another person. Alina held the top side for me and kind of held it and wiggled it into place while I got the inner side on the bottom through those two studs. So that's really the main tricky part is getting those both aligned so that the front will align at the same time. But we got it done, so it's all good to go. Now all we have to do for the rack is throw in this ECU. It's just gonna sit right up inside there. 
So now we'll throw the ECU in. We'll install all the connectors from the harness into the ECU first, and then we'll use our bolt supplied and put it onto the column. So off of the main power and ground, we got the one at the very end. So that'll just shoot right in there. And we got our smaller signal wire harness here. Plug that right in. We're gonna be using this to tap a fuse into the fuse box itself, and we're gonna leave this undone. Later on, Virgo Autos is coming out with a controller piece, so we're gonna leave this undone. Hopefully in the future we can test that function out, but for now, it'll just be hanging loose. And then we got the two wires here hanging off the motor from the column. Those will go right in place as well, just like that. Make sure everything's kinda of tucked up out of the way here. And we got our supplied bolt. We'll throw that right on. Shove it up on the passenger side of this column. So it'll sit just like that. All right, so now we can start putting everything back together here to reassemble the way it came out. Now I'm not putting everything back together until I make sure everything is working correctly first. Now we're gonna be handling the signal wire here. We're gonna use a tap a fuse off of the 15 amp cigarette lighter solder up the signal wire and plug it right back into place. And then we'll go ahead and zip tie all the wires up away from the foot pedals. Now we can plug in the rest of the stuff and actually run our positive and negative through the firewall to the battery, hook up our fuses, and we should be good to go. So right now I'm gonna go over to the passenger side of the car and Alina's gonna fish the positive and negative right through there so it'll go across the dash. So Alina, fish it through. I hear them, I just don't see them yet. Aha, there's the white one. There it is, hold on. Okay, all right, here we go. So we got some fishing wire here. I'm just gonna poke this through the actual grommet. Now there is a piece that Virgo Speed provides to you. It basically replaces this entire unit, but I do wanna keep this one because I don't wanna mess around with it. So I'm just gonna poke a hole and force the wires through. If you're gonna do it my way, which I don't recommend, just make sure you are very cautious of the wires. Just made a small X on the side here. All right, we got some room and we got stopped on something. So we're gonna go inside and find the wire behind the glove box. Alina was able to fish this wire through with some pliers. So now what I learned being an electrician for six months, when you pull wires, this is the easiest method. I'm just gonna wrap the hell out of these. All right, that should be good. So I'm gonna pull it from the outside while Alina kind of feeds it through for me. Here we go. We're good. Awesome. Now, even though the wires are super, super insulated, I do want to just wrap this all up with some friction tape. Car manufacturers use this so it's like an OEM material. Almost looks like it's braided and it adds to the wear factor of it all. So I'm just going to wrap this entire harness real quick. <laughs> So as you can see, this is our new line here. We're gonna be zip tying everything right here all together, routed all the way behind there, and then we have our new cable coming out here. It's basically like you can't even tell. Perfect, good job. So we got our positive and negative wire here. Black is our ground, obviously, and then white is our power. Right before we end up putting our ring terminal at the positive side, we are gonna put an inline fuse. Now they do supply two different mounting options. We could either go with the flat facing one or a vertical facing one. It's up to you which one you wanna use. You gotta find your own location. We are gonna put it in the front side of the battery, and I'll show you guys that in a second. I use the J-hook here for our fuse holder. It's solid, it's close to the battery. Everything looks good here. And uh, we just routed our negative and our positive right there. I'm sure you could think of other ways to do it. This was just easiest for us. Yes, the battery does move a little bit, but we are gonna be solving that later on with um, a prop rod down here so there's no movement in the battery itself. So now we're gonna be installing our rack back into the car. On top of the upgrade for the manual conversion, there's no ports obviously for the lines to go to. They were welded shut. We're going to be adding these GK Tech solid mount bushings. These are gonna keep the rack from actually having any play whatsoever. So it'll just be like a solid mount. So these are gonna be a nice upgrade to go along with the power steering upgrade. So let's go throw this all in. Alrighty, so slide those in. And I'm hoping the rack just goes right on. There you go. Pushings go in. Bracket follows. Put the GK Tech washers in real quick. Tighten them up now. Now, as you can see, this is a perfect area to show you. So we just have to extend this column piece here right onto the rack and uh, tighten it up. We should be good. So we're basically just throwing this all together now. We picked up some phase two motoring inner and outer tie rods from Njuka Racing. We also got new boots. 
think I got it from AutoZone or something, 10 bucks. So we're just gonna slap this all together right now. set to go if you guys are genuinely interested in picking up a kit for yourself make sure you go hit up virgo speed industries i'll make sure to leave a link down below for you guys to go check out their website brian over there and his team are phenomenal with what they do they take a bunch of pride in all their product they also have more than just the electronic power steering system they got a couple other things for 240s as well but the quality is top notch and i 100 recommend them brian if you're watching this appreciate the heck out of you man thank you so much for trusting us with this install but anyways guys that is all for today's video if you like the video, leave a like. It really helps out the channel a ton. If you want to stay up to date on all the builds and see a full review on this system, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.